Konnichiwa. This is the Shogunstein, and Pan Am is a game from Funko, two to four players that we bought a couple of years ago, and we enjoyed quite a bit. But in the uh, as time went on, and with all the new games that come around and other people's games, it just uh, hadn't been played in a while. And last week, I was at a uh, used game sale with a buddy of mine who we uh, game with, and he picked up a used copy at the, the game sale for like $10, and he brought it to the next game night. We played it. It was a lot of fun. And then I played it again last night with Little Shogunstein. We had a blast. It was a very close game. So I just want to look at whether or not Pan Am still holds up and the answer is yes so spoil alert this is a game that totally still holds up and i think we have to put it back into the rotation as you know in board gaming there are so many new games that come out it's so easy for games to be played once or twice and then you never see them again and you go to a game night and you have four or five people, four or five people bring the, the bag of games and people buy new games and big Kickstarter games. And there's always, you know, that weirdness of, you know, whose game is going to get to the table. And then again, you know, if I spent $100 on a game and of course I'd want to get it out there and play it, but then everyone else has a $100 game that they bought and they want to get it out there. So in the end, you never see these, these games again. So with us... You know, Pan Am, we had played, uh, you know, several times, and then it got lost in that shuffle. Games that I bought, games that other people were bringing. So it was nice to get it out to the table again a couple times uh, recently, and I forgot how good this game is. And for Funko, which is more a mass market game company, I remember I got this originally at uh, Target. I think eventually it went to other stores, but this was a, a Target exclusive at one point. Funko usually makes, you know, IP type games, the Jaws game, you know, things like that. And they usually, you know, on, I don't want to say easier side, they're usually on the, the lighter end of, of games for, with that said, for Funko, Pan Am is definitely you know, heavier for them. Again, it's not a heavy game. You know, it's not a, uh, your friend who likes Feld and buys four versions of the same game and then complains about the Kickstarter and then backs it again because there's a new game tray. That person's not going to think Pan Am is heavy. They're going to get mad at the, you know, the random event card because, you know, they, you know, their strategy is all thrown off. They can't maybe win the game because of a random event card and they're going to complain. That person's not going to find this game heavy. But I think if you're a, a casual gamer or even someone that's used to medium weight games, for Funko, Pan Am is, 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 is a heavier game. Again, it's not heavy compared to a Lacerna game or a Feld game. But for again, for a mass market game that you can get at Target from Funko, this is on the heavier side. And you get this, this beautiful map, which is kind of weird to look at because again, it's an air map. So you're looking from above. So it takes a little getting used to where everything is. Now, ultimately in this game, What's happening is Pan Am, the airline, like it did historically, is building out of Miami. And ultimately, the game is won by owning the most Pan Am stock. So for all the other things you do, in the end, you want to get Pan Am stock. And throughout the game, Pan Am is expanding. And they're going to try and take over your routes. You'll have opportunity to sell your routes. And that's how you're going to get money to buy the, the, the stock. So they're going to start out here in Miami and start working their way across the, the, the globe. So game starts at seven rounds. There is a event card. Okay. So again, your, your friend that, uh, you know, wants to play their, their Feld game they're not into the random events. I like them, it's fun, it changes things up. So the random event is how you start, it tells you something's gonna happen, tells you the stock price, because again, ultimately this game is won by the most stocks. So 
Did you buy too many when it was expensive? Did you not buy enough? So the price goes up and down. So here it's gonna tell you, in this case, it's gonna go up one. Sometimes it can go up to, to eight. Sometimes it can go down. So it changes things up. This is also telling us that at the end of the round, there are gonna be two dice rolled by Pan Am for routes that they're gonna take over. So if you can get some of those routes and then Pan Am takes it over, that's how you're gonna make some shekels. So again, if Pan Am buys a route that is a one, you're gonna get five. If they buy a route that's two, they're gonna get um, nine. If they buy a route that's three, they're gonna get 12. If they buy a route that's four, it's four, 14. Here's like a four over, over here. So if you know that there's gonna be two shots of uh, Pan Am buying your stuff, you know, you wanna get those routes done. So you have your uh, Pan Am phase. Okay, and then from there is gonna be some elements of worker placement. So the next thing that's gonna happen after the Pan Am phase is gonna be the engineer phase. This is your worker placement. So you're gonna have engineers and you're gonna, depending on your player count, this is the number of engineers you have. That's the number of places that you're gonna go. So where can you go on the board with your engineers? You can buy an airport. Now, airport, destinations, planes. ABC, not BBD, but ABC. Those, it's kind of like stockpile. You're gonna bid for them. And if you're outbid, you lose your engineer, you get it back and you're gonna rebid. Whoever's the highest bid, only one person's gonna get that thing. So only one person's gonna get an airport, only one person's gonna get one of these cards, only one person's gonna get to be able to buy a plane. So with this ABC, you got the bidding. And if you lose out, so in the game we played last night, little Shogunstein was able to win by just a couple of stock points because he blocked me from getting, I needed the plane that went to three. As you see, the routes, this plane, this route needs a four, that's the big jet, this needs a one, this needs a four, this needs a tree. So there's different planes. Your trimotor can only do a one, your clipper can do a two, your cruiser can do a tree, the jet, the big shot here, can do the, the four. So my whole strategy was ruined because he outbid me on the, on the, the plane. And you gotta be careful because again, if you bid too much, then you don't have the money to buy the stock, which ultimately wins the game. So again, you're gonna buy an airport, which is gonna give you landing rights. So here, you know, New York, my old hometown, I have an airport right here that gives you landing rights, okay? So A is airport. B is the destination cards. This is gonna be basically the main way that you're gonna get your routes. There's a couple different combinations that are gonna happen with the routes. So you can um, get a route a couple different ways. The easiest way you can get a route is what I did here. So Beijing, I'm sorry, no. Let's take Wake to Tokyo. See, hypothetically, I had these cards. I had Wake and Tokyo. They're in the same region. Tokyo, Wake, it's a two, and I have my two plane. There you go. All right. If I wanted to, uh, let's say again, if I wanted to do Beijing to Paris, again, I would need either Paris and the Beijing card, but there are other ways you can do it as well. You can have an airport in one of the cities. So in this case, see like this route here, New York to Bermuda, I have an airport in New York, and then I have the Bermuda card. So I'd be able to claim that route. Now, there are other ways you can do it too. You can use, and you lose your card though. So let's say, you know, again, go back to my Tokyo and Wake example. If I had Hong Kong, because it's the same area, you see the symbol, the little like tree, I could use Hong Kong as a substitute for Wake or Tokyo, but I'm gonna lose this card. 
So you want to make sure you're careful about whether or not to lose the card, but maybe I want to get that route. And then the fourth way is if you have two cards from different regions than the region that you uh, want to get. So again, let's go back to my example here, Beijing and uh, Lisbon. So I wouldn't be able to use anything for, for Paris. I wouldn't be able to use this symbol. And for Beijing, I wouldn't be able to use this symbol. But if I can get two cards of any of the other areas and two cards for any of the other areas here, I could use them to claim the route. So the destination cards are important for getting your routes. You need planes. You need planes that can ca cover the route. So again, this one here, it's a one, I need a one. This one here is a four, I needed the, the jumbo jet. So it's important to have enough planes. Again, the event cards could affect you're buying a plane. So again, one of the reasons Little Shogunstein was able to win was he got an upgrade. He had a cruiser at a three. One of the event cards let him upgrade to the jet for free, where he normally would have had a bid, and that would have cost the money for that he would have used for a stock. So those event cards can uh, affect the game big time. So planes. Now D, this is, you don't have to bid for these. These are just the order of the routes that you're gonna go. So again, you can maybe take a route that you know someone else is going for. So order for the routes is pretty important. And then the last thing is directives. Directives gets you a card which gives you a, a secret power that there'll be a time in the game that you can reveal and these things, especially there's a couple that end of the game you get free stock. I'm sorry, not free stock, but you can, um, yeah, you get a free stock at the end of the game and that could be key. So. Collecting these directive cards could give you some good bonuses towards uh, doing things in the game that'll help you win. It also lets you go first. So it's kind of like pre-boarding. It's like uh, a pre-check on TSA. So even though there's a first player, if you went to the directives and you're here, you're going to go before the actual turn order. So once we've uh, put our engineers out f along the, uh, the the places as our worker placement in, in the board. We're going to do the, the resolution phase. So again, you're going to go in order and put those airports. You're going to get those destination cards. You're going to get your airplanes. You're going to build your routes. And then you're going to see if anyone gets directives. Then what's going to happen is Pan Am is going to go. Pan Am is going to There'll be a dice that's rolled, and it'll show you which way it's expanding out of um, Miami. There's also an option that you could roll the Pan Am symbol, and allows you to sell your route to Pan Am, get some extra shekels. And then you're going to look at your, uh, how much, uh, your income. So you're going to get, so if I have this route here, I'm going to get, I'll have two income from that route. I'll have two income from this route. That's four. If I have an airport out there, that's another one. So I'll have five income, and then I'll get five, you know, five dollars. And then the last thing that'll happen before we repeat is you have the chance to buy stock. So again, um, you know, if you're a heavy gamer, you know, you're used to playing, you know, heavy games. Yeah, this might not be a heavy game in, in that respect. But if you're someone that plays, you know, medium games or, or lighter games, this is, you know, a little heavier than you'd expect from a game you're going to get at Target. Between the worker placement, the building the routes, there's a lot of things going on here. I think it's, it's, it's a wonderful game. Uh, you're going to learn some geography when you do this. It, it, it's very thematic, the art for that time where Pan Am. And again, unfortunately, if you remember in the 80s, there was that uh, terrible bombing of the Pan Am plane over Lockerbie, Scotland. And I think that was the end of Pan Am. But once upon a time, Pan Am was like the, the premier airline. And it was like a real fancy way. It wasn't like spirit. There wouldn't have been, if there was YouTube back then, there wouldn't be people fighting on the, to get onto Pan Am the way they, they fight on, on, on spirit. So does this hold up? I think absolutely. I'm glad that... Uh, my friend picked up a copy at the used game store and then we played it and then we played it uh, again the, the next day. And it, it's a wonderful game that, uh, 
you know, again, got lost in the, in the shuffle, but you know, I'm gonna put it back on the, you know, the active shelf and uh, it, it's a lot of fun. So I really recommend Pan Am and it's, a, it's not an expensive game. Even full price is at Target. You can, you know, you can get your, uh, you know, your, your, your flu shot or, you know, go to the pharmacy there and do something, get a $5 coupon or you use your, your, your bread bonus or any of those things. This is not an expensive game, even if you're not lucky enough to find it used. And there's a lot of game here and it's just a lot of fun. And um, does it hold up? Absolutely. Pan Am, great game. And uh, you're gonna be playing this uh, a lot more as, as we've called, as we've, you know, we're in a new location now. We have a lot less space. We don't have as many games. So Pan Am is definitely gonna get played more. Definitely holds up. Pan Am, this is Shogun Steen out.